even know I've tried so many so many times I look like a mess we're having a heat wave here and it is just absolutely insane I can't find a good place to film hi everyone it's Diana I'm back with another video for those of you who don't know who I am or are just joining I am a registered dental hygienist I just recently graduated and I film videos about my life what's you know <laughs> the most interesting at that time which just so happens to be um <laughs> right now is me going through dental hygiene school and starting this new career if you haven't subscribed already please do i'd love that like so much <laughs> and thanks to everyone who has subscribed already and has been watching my videos and commenting thank you so much i love answering all your guys's questions so keep them coming so this video kind of goes hand in hand with the video i posted last time in that video i kind of show you guys what i do visually in the in the day kind of in between patients because <laughs> i can't actually show you anything but this time i'm reading off a list that i made for a friend just kind of explaining everything that i do in detail with some tips i think that video i couldn't cover everything i was just showing you guys just kind of what my day roughly looks like. This is more like a detailed version of that and also me talking about how I do things to speed things up. Glamour. <laughs> I'm still new at this. I've only been doing this for four months. So this isn't gonna be the way I do things forever. You guys might not find it efficient enough. Maybe you have a better way, let me know. <laughs> First things first, I'm gonna kind of just talk about what I like to do first thing, which is set up my office. My office is very team oriented but i work like by myself <laughs> i have people help me of course if i ask them i would be a bigger burden <laughs> if i tried to help them out first before setting up my stuff because i'd be late running behind so when i first come to the office i do my things first and then if i have time i will help out others or if it's something reasonable to do you know common sense i'll do it but I highly suggest setting up your own space first just set yourself up for the day because i've done it where i've tried to do the cda's uh jobs and stuff like that and i've just fallen behind because i didn't get all my charts and stuff ready just set up your own op <laughs> first that's my biggest tip so once i get to the op i uh, am setting it up i try and do the things that can kind of be left on their own to start up so like <laughs> turning on the computer the radiograph setting that up and then i go fill up the water have that ready to go so then i can purge my cavitron lines and water lines i try and put the not the super hardest basically how warm ever tap water can get that we fill it up with I try and fill it like as hot as possible because by the time even the first patient comes in it's already cooled down I think the air compressor whatever cools down the water significantly um so I like to warm it up as much as I can if your thing is already connected to a water line this is something you probably want to find out before you start working once i've done that the computer's already turned on then i go ahead and click on all the software so they can go ahead and load and be ready to go so i'm not standing there sitting around <laughs> uh waiting for a application to open while the patient is sitting with me if you can however you have your instrument set up we have trays and then we cover them so our trays are covered i have them all ready to go so they have my gauze my cotton rolls my floss whatever i need i have it on the tray and i have it usually ready the night before or the shift before or whatever it's just before i come in and then what i like to do once the computer is on i like to go through the schedule and see exactly what i need for each patient so if i need stuff for bite wings i make sure i have a sleeve for the digital sensor a rin i look through their charts if they need topical if they need something specific a neck pillow i make sure that's all ready to go at least i try to for the most part sometimes i can only kind of manage to get the first half of the day prepared and then i do the, the last three to four patients i make sure each tray is organized with the uh, patient that it will be used on um we use paper charts or we're not chartless yet i guess you could say <laughs> everything else is digital except for the note taking so i put the files underneath each tray so i know where it is i just grab it out of the closed 
cabinet and then it's all there you guys might want to use some like sticky notes maybe if you don't have um charts and you're just all digital and then you can stick it somewhere on the tray on your cassette just telling you exactly what you need for that patient again also try and keep everything um close by you fluoride varnish fluoride trays whatever you guys use for fluoride polishing i make sure i have my drawer and it's filled with everything that I need. I don't stock my trays from them. It's that's just there for emergency. Everything that I use to stock my trays are um, like the night before are in the back in the sterilization room. Um, I also like to get the <laughs> goodie bags for the patients ready to go. I only maybe only have to switch out the toothpaste from Crest whatever the brand that they have at the office with uh, Sensodyne. So I'll have a few of those ready to go. Most people decline them. That's fine. And then, um, oh, another tip is to make sure with your trays that the patient has a lingual bar, that you have a floss threader, or if they have a bridge that you're using, whatever you use to clean your bridges, have that floss there ready to go. I usually have two lengths of flosses for people with lingual bars. So one shorter one and then one long one that I can do everywhere else. I've just learned that it's so so much harder when you have a longer piece of thread of floss and you're trying to thread it through the teeth it's a nightmare and especially i want to say 99.9% .9 of people who have a lingual bar that i've seen haven't flossed so it's like a bloody mess and it's just like it gets everywhere so after this one i've got my trays ready i get myself ready i wipe down my loops with alcohol again spray them with glass cleaner make them all clean i put them on and then i put them on my face adjust the light and basically that stays on until lunch take them off clean them put them back on after lunch um just because i don't want to keep touching it i don't want to have to keep moving it up and down that's really annoying <laughs> after you've gotten all your everything ready to go get yourself ready for the day drink your water take your vitamins do what you gotta do to uh, make it through the day basically get yourself prepared mentally prepared have your gloves stocked if you're wearing gowns have them nearby have everything you need nearby trust me you don't want to waste seconds like running back and forth trying to get stuff I even go as far as taking out how many pairs of gloves I need per patient. So I usually, if I'm doing radiographs, I have one specific one for radiographs. Um, then I put another pair on for the actual cleaning part, take those off, and then I have a third pair <laughs> for after the patient leaves and then I use that to um, disinfect, sterilize the room. And then I also have a pair of gloves in the dentist size sitting there waiting to go. I also mentioned in the last video on the tray, um, the tools or the instruments that my dentist likes to use the most on people, I keep them together so that they are not searching through your instruments. Um, it's honestly not that big of a deal. Like if I were a dentist, I wouldn't really care. I don't know, it makes me like cringe on the inside. like as if I did something wrong, which I didn't because no one's ever told me to do that. Anyway, I'm telling you guys to do that. <laughs> you guys should be organizing your instruments. If I have the time, I'll even organize the instruments in the order that I use them. So Mirror, the Explorer, the Montana Jack. I use the um, posterior sickle scaler, the Gracie 13 14. I'll use a Nevi as well sometimes. And then I'll switch off between a Gracie 1 2 and then a Gracie 11 12. Those are the ones I use the most. Everything else is just, I kind of pick through if I feel like I need it. <laughs> but those are the main ones that I use and I'll put them in order. But that's really time consuming, especially when I have other things. Looking for an instrument, it's it's getting easier to recognize um, the instruments and what number they are. So maybe in the beginning, if you're struggling, you might want to organize them a little bit better. Um, so we also have a paper schedule kind of posted um, to our cabinet or like area. And on there, I also like to write who is getting bite wings, their age, if they're getting um, a prophy and fluoride, if they're allergic to something, just so that I don't have to touch the computer. The computer is left with the bite wings or x-rays or sorry, the computer is left with the radiographs up and then I don't have to switch between tabs or anything. I just have that paper schedule all there with all my writing <laughs> kind of just, you know, abbreviations and then saying their age as well. I don't know if I mentioned that already. 
That way I can roughly gauge how many um, scaling units and replaning units I'll be using. Age doesn't really make too much of a difference. It's just, just something I like to know. Uh, so sometimes I walk up to the patient and I completely forget their name. So I have to hold their chart so that I can look at the name. I know it's so bad. So if you guys don't use charts, use a sticky note, <laughs> something. Um, and if you don't know how to pronounce the name, ask around. And if you can't say their name, call them by their, their last name. And then if you really butcher their name, just be like, I'm so sorry. I'm, you know, I'm so sorry. Just apologize. <laughs> and then make a note phonetically of like how their name is pronounced. So you don't make that mistake next time. And so as I'm walking then back to the chair, that's where I, you know, introduce myself, ask them how they are. As soon as they cross the line, almost kicked over a bottle um as soon as they cross the line into my op i'm like great i have a few questions for you any changes to your medical history any concerns regarding your teeth are you okay with x-rays and then as they're talking i'm getting the apron sometimes i'll even put the apron already like on my chair ready to go for them i also ask them what type of fluoride they'd like that day and if they're okay with polish i ask them all the questions also if they have any sensitivity for um, teeth cleanings i also ask them if they have any sensitivities during cleanings um, that i should be aware about so they usually go on a spiel like that blah 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 Sometimes I ask them if they have a hard time turning their head and neck for me. Not that it would stop me from asking them to turn their head. It just makes them feel like I'm being <laughs> aware of any of their in injuries, you know, kind of thing. I try not to chit chat. Honestly, I can't do it right now. I can't multitask like that. I talk a little bit at the beginning and a little bit at the end and maybe a little bit in between depending on the time. But usually I'm really focused on the time. I have a little clock across from me that I can see and I am counting down those minutes <laughs> as to when I need to be done and how fast I need to go. Once I get a look inside their mouth, I take a look at the areas that have the most calculus, which is usually sextant five, lingual area, and then the distals of the sevens. So once you're done, figure out your sequence as well I find that knowing the area that you're gonna be cleaning on first helps so I always start with the sex and five linguals then I do quad three which is your lower left buckle quad two buckle quad four lingual and quad one lingual and then I switch so surfaces away surfaces towards it's kind of like a circle and then I'll go back up to the top for sextant two get that done then I'll switch tips to the purple cavi tip which is a lot thinner I'll go over that as well to some areas just so it doesn't really work the best but I feel like I can kind of get in a bit deeper than I can with the green tips that I mostly use and then I'll use it again back on sextant 5 to kind of get between the contacts that's really hard to do with the green tip cavi. I'd also recommend limiting asking <laughs> how they are feeling uh, of course unless you see them squint or something but I'll keep it to one section of the mouth that I'll ask and that was okay and that was okay. Sometimes when I see recession and I'm going over it with the cavi, I can kind of almost tell it will hurt. So that's when I ask, like, was that tooth okay? Because I always let them know that if anything hurts, we can always, you know, adjust or switch to hand scaling. I usually say we'll figure something out. I don't want you to be in pain the entire time. Sometimes though, when I do go over, um, exposed roots and stuff like that they are fine they don't feel a thing so it really is dependent on the person so but for the sake of time keep your asking questions to a minimum and try and keep the chit chat to a minimum some people will talk and talk and talk and you'll barely get anything done i know it sucks but <laughs> i will say i highly recommend that in school, if you haven't been a CDA yet or any dental experience, uh, particularly with polishing, I highly recommend practicing that 
as much as you can get rid of the plaque you'll be fighting plaque more than you'll be fighting calculus it is the most annoying thing ever because of covid we never got to really practice a lot with polishing and i think that's been a huge uh, detriment to my time management because i'm still leaving tons of plaque behind i'm working on it i've gotten a lot better i've watched videos i've practiced i am practicing um but again i cannot allow myself more than five minutes uh, to polish and I think that's still too long. Nowadays we're also still supposed to do selective polishing. Even with the Cavitron I'm struggling to get all the plaque off. Sometimes I feel like I've done a good job and then I'll go in with a 1314 and I'll just be like shoveling plaque out and you're like what the hell? <laughs> Where did this all come from? Okay sorry I had to change the angle. I had to change back to my phone. It's not the best quality but gosh darn it. I am going to finish this freaking video so um yes polishing i highly recommend or even just you know getting good at removing plaque if you can do it with your cavatron if you have any tips please let me know i don't know what is normal after polishing like how much um plaque is there is supposed to be left behind but it kills me it kills me every time i see my dentist go in and then i see that little ball of plaque on his explorer and i'm like what the hell that is something i would stress calculus you'll you'll get there i'm getting better at it it's just the plaque i don't know why it's driving me insane the plaque is literally driving me insane so when it comes time for the dentist to come and do their exam on your patient i highly recommend asking beforehand what they would actually like to hear from you what i tell my dentist and this is what i've figured out over a few weeks I, sh I could have just saved myself a lot of time if I just realized this before <laughs> to ask him beforehand exactly what he wants from me although he was being nice and he said that he was just trying to let me like work on my cleaning and that he would do everything like he wouldn't expect me to say anything but as weeks go by he's kind of like expecting me to like um, give him a little report <laughs> before he goes in and it really does put you on the spot it's like giving a presentation in front of the patient and you're saying all these stuff and the patient is not understanding and like looking scared at you but it's <laughs> the most normal like thing ever you're just saying it in dental terms anyway so what i like to say is we have the patient's name blah blah here their main concerns are blah 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 there are no new or we have new radiographs. I like to kind of add in if they have a pan already done because sometimes he likes to ask for that. And then I'll go and describe the gingiva, the, if I've seen anything, any lesions, anything like that. I'll be like, there's rolled margins, blunted papilla, they're bulbous, uh, inflamed, generalized recession. He likes to call them like holes. Like, did you feel any holes while you were scaling? I talk about... Um, if it was light, moderate, or heavy bleeding, uh, the amount of calculus they had, um, any food traps. So I highly recommend specifically asking your dentist what they want to hear. Some will want you to actually say where you've noticed some decay. I will say at the beginning, I had a, I actually I still do. I still do this because I can't remember. I'll notice something on a tooth and if I don't write it down, <laughs> I'll forget about it or I'll forget which tooth it was. I'll like try and say something to the dentist and then he'll be like well what tooth is it and i'll be like um the three four i think so just turn around and write it on a sticky note it'll save you the embarrassment <laughs> at the end of the appointment also ask the dentist how they'd like the op ready for you for their exam is other than like instruments or their specific instruments is there something the light in a specific way those are just some good things to know before the dentist come some people are, are just low-key and they don't give a crap this dentist that i work for i think is just really used to things being done a certain way because they have such low turnover that they've been working with each other for such a long time that they just know now i also recommend if you're not a cda ready to ask your dentist is gonna do a quick i don't even know the proper term terms of them uh, like falling down a resto or something like that to fix a bite um i had to ask the cda's what does he usually use for that ask instruments like if you can ask like hey what's this 
hey, what's that? Again, you might be in an office where the CDA comes and does everything if they are gonna fix something or they're gonna move them to another chair or get them to come back. The two other hygienists that work at the office, one's on maternity leave, was there for a really long time. So she obviously picked up on all of the the instruments. Like she knows all the instruments and everything, all the, all the products. And the other one that works part-time, she used to be a CDA at that office. So she knew everything already. I'm coming in completely new with no absolutely no background. I definitely struggle. <laughs> I feel like an imposter. I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing some of the time. Patients also usually don't know when the appointment is done because they think that like, you know, I have to come back in after the dentist is done or something like that. So taking off the bib and physically or like verbally saying your appointment is done for the day you're all done go enjoy the day <laughs> get them to the front we tell our treatment plan and everything that we did to the front desk i don't have to post anything myself i don't have to do scheduling i'm very lucky i feel <laughs> that i just have to focus on the cleaning i bring them to the front and then i race back because i'm usually five minutes behind <laughs> sometimes more. I've had patients leave because I've taken too long to get to them. Um, yeah, it really, <laughs> really sucks being late. I'm hoping I get to a point where I'm just done cleaning super quick. <sighs> one day, one day, one day. Anyway, I race back to the op and then I clean and then I start all over again. <laughs> Use a template for your notes if you can so you can keep them consistent. That's gonna range office by office so there's really no point in me telling you guys how to write your notes. You'll be taught in school um, notes in private practice if you don't know already are way less intense you want to keep them as detailed as you can for your own sake i like to put little notes of where they are sensitive so that next time they come in i'm like oh i remember this spot was sensitive do you think it will be the same please let me know blah blah, blah. and they appreciate that i remember that and then in pencil i'll write little notes about their their lives like anything big <laughs> happening if they're going on vacation so that I can ask them the next time that they're coming back. Some other tips for a new hygienist just starting is uh, the calculus. I, I mean, everything I'm saying, I still beat myself up over quite a bit. I'm still so annoyed that, you know, I feel like I can't get all the calculus off or I'm leaving it all behind. I'm just trying to remind myself that an hour to do all that, everything that I just said in an hour and also do a good cleaning is just is so unrealistic for especially for a new grad it's just it's way too much it's way too much to do in an hour mind you i'm always late so i do take more than an hour to get stuff done but i'm just trying to remind myself that i can't get calculus off every time if you're a student still and you're seeing patients and you're like wow there's still calculus left blah 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 like that will shoot you in the butt for sure because i did it I'm pretty sure I was like kind of shocked um, that some people still had calculus that even though they recently saw their hygienist, but there's so many things that you don't know that could have affected that, affected their cleaning, like the timing, was the hygienist late, was the patient late? Was there something wrong with the radiographs? I have issues with the radiographs all the time, the the sensor, I'm always, always like having to fight the computer <laughs> to take x-rays or radiographs, but it's infuriating and that eats up into your time and you only have an hour and I'm supposed to also fit an exam in there sometimes, like there's just no way I can get it all off. So be prepared to miss calculus and get that in your head while you're in school i don't know i feel like if someone is telling you someone who hasn't had any dental experience and they're telling you that they're fine straight out of school either they're getting more than one hour for cleanings <laughs> They're just a person that really doesn't, you know, give a fuck about timing or anything like that. Or uh, this is the one I most likely believe is that they're lying. <laughs> they're lying. They don't want you to know that they're struggling as well. I will just never judge ca calculus being left over <laughs> after my experience, re like, in the past four months. So for the appointments to go smoothly, like, you just need a routine. Like I said, everything near you, you don't want to be wasting your time running around grabbing stuff. It, like, every second counts. Literally every second counts. Like I said in the beginning, this is just how I do things now. I'm sure I'm going to find ways to improve on my timing and, like, figure things out to get done a lot faster. So it's ever-changing. Take you some time to figure out, to get in a groove as well. Just try and start off 
throughout the day as prepared as you can be. I hope this helped. Please ask any questions down below if you like or on Instagram, you can follow me there and message me there. I think I've kind of gone step by step as detailed as I can of what I like to do with my patients and given tips that I've learned so far. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> See you at my next video. Bye!